Uh, so welcome and this is a video I was actually quite excited to make and as it happened it was an experience I'll say that. I got this, my iPhone 4S, the one I reviewed in a video, checked out its cameras, checked out I guess, my iPhone 10, and used it for a week. Yeah, like I said it was an experience to say the least. It was really an experience to go back to a phone from this era, 2012, 2011. So when I say use it for a week, instead of using my main phone, my iPhone 10, I literally used only my iPhone 4S. I didn't have a SIM card in it because it's not the same size anymore, so I can't put my current one in. So I literally, I hotspotted my 4S to my 10 for internet, because again, no SIM card, no data, kept the 10 in my pocket, and only use my 4S. The reason easy way to get on the apps working that I couldn't do before, which is just to try and download them, but it makes you download an older version that did work. So YouTube and stuff, it, they all work, they look older, but they all still work. So I was ready and I did a week with it and let's talk about it. So let me get the big elephant out of the way. This phone is slow. Oh God, it's slow. Honestly, everything you have to do takes 20 times longer, maybe an exaggeration obviously, but so much longer than it did on any modern phone. On my 10, I could open up anything within a matter of milliseconds, half a second at most. It just takes an age with this. And a phone is meant to be something you can pick up, quickly use, get to whatever you're looking at, and just end up scrolling for hours, because it's so easy to get into, there's no barrier, there's nothing that makes you think, okay, I can't bother to do this now, I'll do it later. The iPhone 4S, you have to commit to doing whatever you want to do on this phone, or else you'll be in a world of pain. And even if you do commit, you're still in a world of pain. You wanna unlock your phone, that takes like half a second to a second, obviously, because you have to type in the numbers. So maybe that's the same as Face ID, but honestly, it's just slower. Especially opening any app on this phone, and for me in particular, it's YouTube, because I use that often, watch videos when I'm not at home. You really have to decide, I want to watch YouTube videos right now, I've got to do this. I can't decide, oh, let me check Instagram. I can't decide, I even wanna scroll down and check my notification bar. Can't do that, you're on YouTube, wait a minute, minimum, even longer for everything else to load after. It's honestly a pain, that's the thing that you realise it's kind of a given, you can just have the ability to cancel whatever you was doing, oh I'm opening this app, never mind, I'll go to this app, or never mind, I'll just lock my phone. You trying to do any of those things, you realise you probably won't even want to use the phone. That's a theme in this. On a more positive note, listening to music, which is a thing everyone does on their phones pretty often, it's the same as any other phone because it's no different what device you're using. The speed it loads up, that's mainly determined by the internet speed that you have. The app it takes a while to load, obviously, and it takes a while to get to each playlist, etc. like that with my Spotify. But once you've got to it, it's the same as always. You can skip through tracks relatively quickly, I guess, even if they're downloaded. It's fine, basically, and you lock your phone when you listen to music. You can still connect your favorite wireless earphones all back on this one. Wired if you still have them, straight to the phone, play your music, it's it's fine. It's it, I, nothing to complain about, it's exactly as it always was. And I won't lie, I'm a huge fan of the big screens on phones now. I'm like a huge fan of the glass sandwich, fat glass screen. It just looks really nice in my opinion, but the nostalgic fact of going back to this size of a phone was really nice. Nice little display, still on glass as well, so that's pretty much where it all came from, but small display, easily fits in your hand. I can reach every corner of the phone one-handed without any stretching or anything compared to the 10. Unless you've actually had one of these before, I don't think that will feel the same. If you never had a small phone like this and now you come to it for the first time, you probably dislike it, but if you've had it before, it's a nice little throwback, I guess. But back down to the thing that really holds this phone back in multiple ways its performance, it's not very good at all, I can tell you that right now. It's a really tricky thing to get used to when most of the apps take 10 times longer to load. And besides that point, which I've already mentioned, let me give you an example on YouTube. On YouTube, on your iPhone 10 or whatever phone you've got now that's modern, 2016, 15, even 14 onwards, you just go on YouTube, pick a video you wanna pick, scroll through, find it, go in your sub box, however you wanna find it, that takes no time at all. You tap it, you rotate your phone, and you enjoy the video. That's it. On the iPhone 4 on the other hand, watching videos is horrible. Firstly, it takes an age for everything to load and it's not the internet speed because that same speed you're getting, yes it was hotspotted, but let's say if I was at home on Wi-Fi, the same speed adequately loads everything on my 10, on my computer, on every other device in the house. But it takes 10 minutes for anything to load on the screen, the thumbnails barely load, and then barely anything loads after like you've scrolled more than half a second down. Once you finally pick the video you want to watch, 
then said video takes another 30 seconds or so to load up and it's again not because of buffering it's just the phone can't load up any faster anymore bear in mind these apps are on the brink of like we are barely being supported at this point this is the last supported version so i can give it some slack but it's awful either way then once you've finally got into actually watching said video and you've rotated it and you're watching it will stop and stutter and buffer midway through the video even though like i said the internet is fine. The bandwidth is fine. The speed is fine. Everything about my internet, wherever I was, was fine. It just really couldn't cope with playing through a video. Even at 1080p, which it's not really 1080p, I wouldn't say 720p. Anything HD or 480p struggled sometimes. But basically, if you set it to auto, it would always default to 144p, 240p, just so it could keep up with performance. The speed was fine but it had to do it just so it could actually run it. So basically when I was trying to actually watch videos and stuff when I was out, it was horrendous, I couldn't, and I basically didn't. I didn't want to watch videos. I didn't want to casually go on YouTube, watch a quick video while I was eating or something. I just didn't do it. Then there's stuff like RAM management. RAM management is non-existent. 512 megabytes of RAM basically means I can open up YouTube, I can leave YouTube for 10, 15, 20 seconds, maybe up to 30 seconds, and maybe if I'm pushing it a minute. And then by the time I try and open it again, it'll have already had to reload, or whilst reloading, it will crash, and then I'll have to open it again. That's very common. Other apps like Twitter and Instagram and stuff, you can probably open Twitter and Instagram, possibly just those two, and eventually one of them will have to reload after a bit. Stock apps, maybe not as bad, but after that, it's just, you can't run more than two apps or three apps at a time on this. It's really, really being pushed to its depths with iOS 9 and barely supported apps. There's no other word for it other than unusable at this point. No other word. And obviously I didn't keep track of all of them, but there's plenty of bugs to go along with it. Plenty of crashes, plenty of specific things that just don't happen normal. There's one time I was on my home screen and I just wanted to scroll down to the notification center and see some notifications, whatever was there. I heard one ping. I tried to. Nothing happened. No reaction when I scrolled down. I tried to scroll up to the control center. No reaction. Both of those refused to work. And it's not because the screen wasn't working. They just refused to come down. And I had to do a full reboot phone to fix that. I didn't keep track of many other bugs. But trust me, there's plenty to go around if you want to find a few. Just use it. You'll find plenty. So yeah, final thoughts after using this. I really didn't use it that much at all, to be fair. In a week, you normally pick up your phone hundreds of, many hundreds of times probably in a week. With the iPhone 4S, I basically never touched it. I basically went on to test stuff, went on to try and do stuff I would do on my 10, watch YouTube, play music, go on a couple games. Games did not work, I'm just gonna tell you that now. No games really worked at all. There was some, but to sum things up, I really didn't use this phone that much at all, basically. Every time I could have an opportunity to pick it up and scroll through a social media, YouTube to watch a video, I just put it down and we did something else. I went on YouTube, on my computer if I was at home. I just didn't go on YouTube if I was out or didn't do anything. I just had no AirPods in, which is a rare sight. I just went on my Xbox if I was at home. Anything else other than using my phone because I committed to saying I'm not just gonna go back on my 10 because the point is I'm gonna use the 4S the whole week. So I basically didn't use the 4S most of the week. Yeah. It's wild how much speed and efficiency of the phones has got to the point where we've really adapted of it. So now all the phones where we used to be used to it and now it's nowhere near what we're used to now, it just completely puts you off. You don't want to use it because it can't keep up. And if you're saying you don't want to use anything other than that, you will just find something else to do. You really find anything else to do other than use a phone that's slow and can't keep up. It was a fun experiment, I'll admit. I did enjoy trying it. The nostalgia was the main thing that really, really like made me think, wow, I remember when I used to do this. I remember when I used to do that. But it wore off pretty quickly to the point where I just left the phone. I was basically remembering, oh yeah, I'm testing this phone this week. And I was like, yeah, never mind. I'll just do something else. But if you're asking, is it a usable phone? Could you use this for a week? Yes, you can get it to iOS 9.3.6, which looks very similar to new iOSs. So you won't be like bamboozled there. You can get fairly updated apps to the point banking apps and stuff are always fully updated that's a nice touch you can get fairly updated apps so they look very similar they work they have minimal crashes based well actually that's a lie they have a lot of crashes but you can get a working phone from this iphone 4s in 2020 should you no hell no don't try it if you don't have to but for me i will not be using that i'll be sticking to my iphone 10 and newer 
and yeah, I, I, I was a good experiment, but never again, never again. So yeah, that's it. I know a few people was asking for that, but yeah, I hope you did enjoy that. If you did enjoy, you know the drill, like, subscribe, hit the bell, and I don't know anything else I could do without 4S, but if there is, maybe let me know in the comments. Let me know what you thought of all that experience, and if you have or still have to use that, let me know how you cope. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next video, and yeah, see you.